subscriber shout out. Hello everyone. Welcome aboard. I think the uh, chat box there on screen is broken, but I can see you all chatting here now. How y'all doing? Welcome to the PlayStation State of Play, which is essentially like E3 conference for PlayStation. A lot of new announcements today. Possibly some PS4, PS5 games to be announced and or uh, covered. No talk about the PS5 or uh, release date or pricing, but there might be some stuff about the PS5 though. Maybe more talk about the controller features, other stuff like that. Good to see you all here. Welcome to all the new subs. You guys are great. Good to see you here. Thanks guys for smashing like and hanging out too. I'm excited for the uh, the new year of gaming. Let's go ahead and bring up the screen. We're starting a little early because their show is starting in about five minutes or so. I'm really hoping to see. What do you guys think we're going to see? I uh, assume we're going to probably hear some stuff about uh, Grand Theft Auto being on PlayStation 5 again. Maybe some other stuff. I would love to see uh, some remastered PlayStation games coming back. Although I don't know uh, what. But we'll have to see exactly what they're what they're talking about. You didn't even know this was happening today? Yeah, it kind of was uh, out of nowhere. They did this a few months ago, and uh, I'm really excited for it. So welcome to everybody who made it. Uh, Ruan, thank you very much for becoming a member. Welcome aboard. Also, there's been some issues with YouTube streaming lately. So if some of you don't get the notification or if the stream crashes or whatnot, it's all on YouTube's end. And uh, sorry I didn't have this scheduled earlier. I'd kind of forgotten about it too myself. Bum, 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 bum. Story-driven World War II game? Oh, that'd be awesome to see, like, another... Oh, maybe maybe they'll reveal Call of Duty uh, Cold War or something here. Maybe we'll get some big reveals. It's kind of the last... It's the last year for PlayStation 4. So everything after this is going to have to be... Uh, everything after this is going to have to be kind of like uh, PS5, right? Like, after this, they're going to start doing all the focus onto the PS5. They want people to buy the new console. So there's probably going to be some last-minute stuff, but I don't know exactly what we could expect. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect PlayStation to announce any sort of new franchises or anything. Probably just like a new... Uh, maybe they'll reveal the price of the PS5. Well, they confirmed that there's not going to be any talk about the PS5 uh, in terms of pricing or availability or really anything to do with the hardware or the business of it. So we'll have to just basically... Uh, do, do whatever. Yeah, the PlayStation chat's going pretty wild. Let's take a look at that. Well, that's good. Maybe that's you guys. You guys can be about as active as that. Everybody say hi. Good to see you all here. Hello. What's up, Dustin's Get Good Gaming? Welcome back, dude. Good to see you here. You don't want to see an old GTA 5 on, or GTA on the PlayStation? Yeah, I don't either. I think... Uh, GTA is like Skyrim. Like, do we really need... You know, let's get some new games, dude. Like, Skyrim's a great game, and so is uh, GTA and stuff, but we really don't need... Uh, we don't really need any more. By the way, if you guys go into this chat for the official PlayStation stream and say hi, it'll get highlighted too, so... What's up, Jerry? Good to see you here. All right, we got about 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Don't know what to expect for this one. I hope it'll be something interesting. I hope it'll be something new. I really don't know what to expect, though, because it's like they're not going to announce like a new Grand Theft Auto, or I mean, a new Grand Turismo or something at the last minute. I think what we're going to have to do for this state of play, if I were PlayStation, is you'd have to talk about how awesome the PlayStation was, like the PS4, and talk about all the good stuff, like all the good games that came out, and then just put all the hype onto PlayStation 5. Like, you gotta get everybody to switch to the new system, right? That's where all the money's going to be. That's where all the money's gonna be invested. Brandon with the two saying, first time seeing without a hat. I kinda have a hat on now. Big O hair. I'll have to get a cut soon. Thanks, man, for the support. Uh, imagine full backwards compa ca compatibility for old titles. Well, there's going to be the complete digital version of the PlayStation 5, so that makes me wonder if PlayStation's going to put more emphasis in bringing all the old games. Oh man, could you imagine if you could go back and play like the old Gran Turismo for like two dollars? At this point, no, not a lot of people have a lot of the old hardware anymore. Like it's old, it probably isn't working, or it's expensive to get. 
So like paying two, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars for an old PlayStation game would be a lot more worth it than like going to get an old PlayStation and an old uh like getting an old PlayStation to work and then getting all the games for it might be kind of like expensive. Not that buying a PS5 and paying, you know, 20 bucks would be cheap, but at least you'd have the new system with, with access to all the old stuff. But that's PS5 stuff that we're going to have to learn about later. I don't think they're going to talk anything about that, according to their tweets. Subsistence? Yeah, Colt's been playing that one. That's amazing. Warbath, thanks for the upgrade. Appreciate you upgrading to a raptor hatchling. Welcome aboard, dude, to the uh, higher level. You're in the winner's circle. Thank you for being here. You still have a PlayStation 2? Yeah, me too. Um, but, you know, it gets, like, old and clunky and takes forever to start up. Man, think about how long it used to take to get PlayStation 2. Like, if you were to, if you were to take Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and put it into a PS2, from the moment you hit start on that PlayStation 2 to the moment San, San Andreas turns on, it's, it's almost like 10 minutes. You have enough time to, like, walk away and, like, make dinner. It's crazy. Even if you were to put it into a PlayStation 3, it still would take some time. But PlayStation 2 was so good that with the PlayStation 3, they had to, like, include backwards compatibility. That was cool. Lots of good PlayStation uh, 3 games. What do you guys think were some of the best games for PlayStation 4? I'm definitely putting Ghost of Tsushima up there. Ace Combat was up there. I love those games. They were amazing. All right, let's watch this thing. Uh, hello? Uh-oh, it's Flatline. Or wait... Isn't that the, uh, oh yeah, how the PlayStation looks when you turn it on. Okay, that was weird. Hey everyone, I'm Lou Stutter, producer at Toys for Bob, and I'm here to talk to you about Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Crash 4 is a direct sequel to Crash Bandicoot Warped. The devious villains Neo Cortex and Dr. Entropy have finally escaped their interdimensional prison, leaving an evil scientist-sized hole in the universe. Now they've got their eyes set on not only simply conquering this dimension, but all dimensions. And it's up to Crash and Coco to save the day. This looks cool. Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time is the first totally new game in the Crash Bandicoot series in over a decade. And this looks so fun. For us at Toys for Bob, we felt that it was important to reintroduce longtime fans, as well as new players, to this amazing franchise. First, we made sure to incorporate the classic tense, precise, and perspective-shifting platforming that we all fell in love with. Yeah, this and is then, tough. We wanted to introduce exciting new elements that we can't wait to show you today. These games are brutal. Let's start with Insanity Beach. This is where Crash's adventure first started and where we picked things up again in Crash 4. But there have definitely been changes since we first saw Insanity Beach all those years ago. And throughout Crash 4, you'll see those changes to our gameplay and even our art style. Our art teams wanted to take inspiration from not just the original games, but the animated cartoons that inspired those original games, all while also delivering bigger, more awe-inspiring dimensions to explore. Oh boy. Throughout Crash 4, you'll see wide open new Oh, vistas, I love this. New character models, and lots of expressive animations. And with all of that also comes new additions to the platforming, like having the ability to wall run, rope swing, rail grind, and zip line as well. This almost the feels like a 2D trilogy, Crash, Crash Bandicoot. War, I mean, uh, Ratchet and Clank. Game where Crash would change outfits. Think Crash wearing a biker jacket when riding a motorcycle. That seemed like a natural area for us to expand upon. So we have loaded the game with tons of awesome skins that you can earn and wear throughout the game. These Oof. skins are totally cosmetic and a fun way to express yourself while playing the game. And just to be clear, there's no MTX here. Skins are earned by completing different challenges and earning gems within levels. Oh, no microtransactions. Crash 4 also introduces the Quantum Masks, the powerful protectors of time and space. Crash and Coco will need their assistance throughout the game to tackle the crazy challenges that we're going to be throwing Crazy! Whether it's Ika Ika, who gives you the ability to instantly flip your center of gravity at the press of a button. Oh, that's cool. Kapunawa, who allows you to slow down the world around you. Or Lonnie Loli, who allows you to phase shift elements in and out of existence. Bending the rules of reality and altering your environment with these new masks is a must. We also can't wait to talk to you about the fourth mask, Akano, but that's gonna have to wait for another day. What we can tell you today, though, is that Crash isn't the only character you get to take control of during oh. this adventure. More than one? You can play the entire game as Coco. Any level oh, that that's you can cool. play as Crash, you can also play as Coco. It was also very important for us that she take a more prominent role in the story this time as well. 
But that's not all. We've got a few other characters that you'll get to control at key points in the adventure so that they can provide their own fresh perspectives and new gameplay. Here you can see that you'll be taking control of Neocortex. He's oh. all about using his blaster to change an enemy in his path. In addition to playing as Cortex, we're excited to reveal that for the first time, you'll also get to tail slap your way through crates as Dingo That's Dial. a big boy. I repeat, you get to play as Dingo Dial in Crash 4. Now, a lot has changed in the years since we last saw Dingo Dial. In fact, he hung up his old flamethrower rocket launcher combo when he decided to retire from a life of villainy and open a diner. Unfortunately for Dingo, fortunately for us, his adventure begins by witnessing the destruction of said beloved diner Hi, and Nima. getting sucked into another dimension. Finally, there's one more surprise I'm oh, that's incredibly cool. excited to show you today. The Crash Bandicoot series has always been about finding new and exciting ways to play through the game. In the past, it's been about taking on time trials or discovering all the hidden secrets. Well, for Crash 4, we wanted to bring something brand new to the table. So we teamed up with our friends at Beanox to create a brand new style of play for Crash 4 that we call Inverted Mode. It's our souped up, bump a berry fueled take on a mirror mode. Not only oh, co op. Shifted, but now each of the dimensions are rendered in a new and unique art style that or, really changes the look and feel of the experience. Or not. One dimension could be asking you to traverse through a neon wasteland, while another tasks players with spinning paint all over the environment to see their path forward. We've even got one that feels like an old-timey movie, with the overcranked camera speed increasing the actual speed of gameplay as well. Oh, like uh, a lot, Cuphead. Players can replay all the game's levels with a totally new and dynamic look and feel. It's an incredibly fun feature that is going to give every player, especially the completionists out there, a reason to revisit each level again to see what new and exciting experience is in store for them. Like Bioshock being underwater. So that's some of the new stuff that we have in store for you in Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Well, that's cool. Experience the space and time-bending madness on October 2nd. All right, October. Uh, Ruan, thanks for upgrading your membership. Dustin, welcome aboard as well. Today's state of play is loaded with third-party updates for PS4 and PSVR. And some new PS5 thanks for the five dollars. And uh, Brandon's saying still have the 64 with Goldeneye. Look at Crash 4. Awesome. It's about time coming to PlayStation 4 on October 2nd. Wow. I'll play that. That looks fun. Party going. The <gasps> latest from IO Interactive. More Hitman stuff. I forgot all about this. They barely showed any footage from Hitman. Oh, dude, actual gameplay. Nice. Besides, oh, PlayStation VR? You should Dude, you can play this game in VR. It's going to be weird when you're breaking a neck. This is awesome. Nathie's going to love this. He's freaking out right about now. Okay, this is this is pretty cool actually. And it comes with the VR mode included, so if you have PlayStation VR, boom. Hello. Oh, that's going to be cool. Play the entire world of Assassin's Trilogy. Oh, boy. Oh, that's going to be next year. I want to play that. That's cool. I got a PlayStation VR. That'll be a lot of fun. What is this? Very puzzling. It looks pretty lit. Gonna be a new Prince of Persia or something? Looks a little too modern to be that. Pretty. Bob Ross!
Oh, I think we've seen this game before. Yeah, I forgot the name of this game, but I think we've seen this before. <clears throat> oh yeah, Braid. That's why it looks so familiar. We are happy to announce oh. Braid Anniversary Edition. They added some extra it's a HD. Classic puzzle cool. adventure where you manipulate time. Hand repainted for modern high resolutions. Many areas have been re envisioned to make them more unique, and it's even more like a living painting with brush strokes animating the world. There are more than nine pixels for each pixel in the original game. There are new animations for smoother motion, improved sound and music to enhance right. the mood, That's and cool. many hours of developer commentary and interviews on subjects like puzzle design, programming, and visual art. We plan to make it the most detailed commentary in any game ever. So wow. if you want to learn how video games are made, Braid Anniversary Edition will be a really good resource. We hope you'll enjoy the game when it comes out early next year. Well, that's cool. I, I like when they upgrade uh, games that everybody played. That's kind of neat. Oh, the PS5 Pathos game. It's a mythic adventure set on a mystical island. Let's take a quick tour in this new footage captured from PS5. Let's do it. Hi everyone, this is Matt Nava from Giant Squid. I'm excited to share more with you today about our upcoming game, The Pathless. Sounds Scandinavian already. The Pathless is an open world, mythic adventure game set in a vast forest. You play as the hunter. I'm already getting Shadow the of the hunter Colossus is a vibes. Master of archery. She can shoot talismans to fill her dash meter, which allows her to bound across the landscape. Oh, that's kind of cool. Dynamic movement is at the core of the pathless. So the game's unique take on archery is all about timing, not aiming down sights. This design was critical to making it possible to shoot even while moving fast and performing acrobatic maneuvers. You instantly feel as skilled as the hunter herself. Kind of boring just shooting diamonds, though, and not like enemies or anything. She's just kind of shooting targets. But it's cool for like speed running and get going fast. She's she's Sanic. With help from the eagle, you can even fly. The bond between the hunter and the eagle is central in the pathos. I really hope there's big enemies. Please be like Shadow of the Colossus. I'd love to fight you a giant enemy. You can gain altitude while you glide by flapping. Flapping? Yay! Make sure you pet the eagle to keep it clean and in good flying condition. You have to pet the eagle. Confirmed. Looks more like a hawk, but yeah. It's an eagle. Oh. You'll find secrets all over the island if you know where to look. It looks really good. I like this type of art style. It reminds me a little bit like the long dark. Just not first person. Will let you upgrade the eagle's ability to flap. Oh. You will also discover larger puzzles to solve in ancient structures. Yeah, a little Zelda in this too, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, there's definitely some Zelda temple vibes to this, for sure. Little Shadow of the Colossus when you're not inside. With that whole like Atlas viaduct. Is all about finding your own way forward. So unlike most open world games, there's no map. Instead, the hunter can use her mask to peer into the spirit world and discover distant landmarks. Ooh. It even shows you where you've been. Oh, I've been to the Arby's. Getting to higher vantage points will let you see further with spirit vision. giant cursed spirits, the source of the darkness, will pose a constant threat to you on your quest. They will try to separate you from the eagle. Oh, there we go. There's the Colossus. Beautiful. I hope there's a lot of boss fights like this. That would be awesome.
Oh, that looks like a Stay still in the light to avoid detection. Triceratops or something? Dude, that's cool. I love a game with good boss battles. You won't be able to take on the cursed spirits until you've returned light to the obelisks. sort of a key that looks like a deer. When the obelisks are restored, the cursed spirits will be vulnerable. Chase them down through the forest to corner them in a dramatic final battle. Wow, look at them go. He's running. Oh, that's cool. You got to keep up with them and chase them. I like that. That's cool. Hopefully there's more that, than one type of boss. Otherwise, this will get boring pretty quick. Get him. to defeat the cursed spirits to bring light back to the world. I like the eagle face. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the Pathless. We've only scratched the surface. There's so much more to explore and discover. That looks cool, but that should be able to run on a PS4. This year. Thanks for watching. This seemed to be a PS5 exclusive, but nothing about this game can't run on a PS4. Like, I'd play this game, but doesn't make me want to buy a PS5. But it looks cool, though. I'm down with the boss battles. I like that. And the art style is good, too. Remind me of Zelda. Next up, let's Spelunky. see what's for Spelunky 2. Hi, my name is Derek Yu, and I'm the creator of Spelunky. Oh. Ouch. For Spelunky 2, I wanted to make sure we made something that got old fans excited and also brought in new players. It was important we didn't change the things that made Spelunky such a unique experience in the first place. Oh. So many people became fans of the game through their friends and family, and even strangers on the internet. That's one reason why we're adding online multiplayer. And the first game so came out a million years ago. Together. And I also wanted to include that feeling of community into Spelunky 2 itself to make sure that the game felt welcoming, even though it's difficult. In Spelunky 2, when you do runs and discover new characters, you'll also be building an in-game community and family. This game's cool because it's like, it randomly generates every time. Spelunky 2 to feel much more rich and dynamic than Spelunky 1. It's going to feel a lot more full. Players will be able to explore and interact with it in lots of Is that ways. a koala? For example, you'll be able to ride turkeys. Oh, I'm down with that. I love turkey. And find hidden passageways. Tell me more about turkey. And you'll have to choose between branching paths as you make your way deeper into the caves. Hmm. As a result, the stories players create will have much more texture to them. Even after many, many hours of playing, I still have interesting runs that don't even go past the first area. Oh, that was rough. One Oops. Runs often centered around the shops and how you chose to interact with them. Oh, so yeah. Spelunky 2, we've expanded the shopping experience. That guy will shoot you if you try to steal. And exciting. And also added new characters that can help you or hinder you. That was Given nice. Given how amazing the Spelunky community is, it's hard to say how long it will take to find the deepest secrets. But I think the great thing about Spelunky is that the deepest secrets are the ones that even I don't know about. And there are lots of new things to play with that I hope players can use to push past the boundaries of what we, as the developers, know about the game. Derpy dog. Derpy dog. I have two types of favorite stories from Spelunky fans. First are when people are genuinely surprised by something that happened in the game. Ooh. 
and second, the ones where people shared a fun experience with friends and family in multiplayer. Boom. These are the stories I wanted to expand upon in Splatoon oh, no. 2. Don't you do it, William. They're really what guided my design. No lemons. Choices. After releasing Spelunky, I knew there was a lot more that could be done with the concept in the world. Knowing that possibility was out there is what's been exciting for me and the rest of the team. Oh, I like how the water works. That's cool. In a lot of ways, when Spelunky 2 comes out, I want players to experience what we experienced making it. That feeling that there's something special there waiting for you to discover it. A big thanks to the fans who've waited patiently for us to finish Spelunky 2. What's up, John? It's been a long journey, but I think it's going to be worth it. Thanks. This will be a fun game to watch speedrunners try to, to beat the game quickly. Do I like pugs? Yeah, they're cool. I like pug dogs. I really like uh, dachshunds and uh, corgis. But the big dogs, too, like uh, German shepherds, are cool, too. I've had all sorts of different dogs over the years. September 15th. Okay. That We've seems got fine. a bunch of new PS4 updates to share with you, starting with a closer look at Genshin Impact. Oh, boy. Here we go, boys. A goo. Hey, there's something strange over there. Come on, let's take a look. Oh boy. <sighs> William with the two dollar lemons. Oh boy. No oh, more archery though. What is this game? We Bard Online or something? Yeah, they're probably saving the better stuff for the end. Oh, that looks pretty. I'd love to be able to build a city like that. If this were a city builder, I'd be in. I deal in death. If you cannot bring yourself to kill, speak my name. It's always weird when these kids look like they're 15 and they're talking about serious things like death. Oh, that was a cool looking bow. Does anyone know what this is? Any guess? Oh yeah, they already told us. Genshin Impact. Sometimes uh, Eastern titles don't really resonate. Ooh, this looks cool. Claim your mind for the void armada. Gods have squealed for my mercies. Who are you to stand in the way of my vengeance? Oh, this looks different. Like a flash game. Wait, is this a turn-based game? This looks like turn-based 2D combat. Dude, this is like Tron meets... like... Dark Souls or something. Oh yeah, this is some Tron stuff right here. This music is dope, dude. This is really good music. Oh yeah. I like this. Aeon. It's like Tron meets, uh, like Spawn? Tron Spawn. Oh, here we go. Anno... what? Ooh, Cyberpunk City. I'm in. I love that stuff. Tea? Tea? Come on, give me the ramen. Where's the ramen shop?
Oh, worms? Ooh. Those are some big bed bugs. Oh, there's some ramen. Ken Lung's got some ramen in chat. There we go. My hero. Thank you. <laughs> ramen emotes are coming in. Yeah, PlayStation's got a lot of these, like, weird techno games. Uh, Anno Mutation? M mutation Time to talk bug snacks. Let's check out some gameplay footage oh, captured from PS5. This game. My invitation is open. Come join me on the island of bug snacks. Wow. That's your new lead? Another monster hunt? Elizabeth Megafig is a two-bit con artist. Don't tell me you actually believe this half-baked nonsense. I swear, if you chase this bug snack story, you're out of a job! You're the journalist! Vesperit said you'd be coming. There's a bug snack right over there. Do me a favor and take my snack. Oh. Uh, stranger, I could use your help. This bunger goes wild for ketchup. Use it to lead the bunger over yonder. I want you're, you to I'm in. that journalistic instinct you're capturing burgers? to find out what my favorite bug snack is. What the hell? This game's like Pokemon and Pokemon Snap. Except instead of catching Pokemon, you're catching food. Oh. Wendy's, Arby's, KFC, Domino's. This is the game we've been waiting for, boys. This is our game. Oh, I'm in. Say you do find these bug snacks and make it back alive. You just might keep your job. Now get going and try not to fall off a cliff. If they have Wendy's nuggets in this game, I'm so in. What was that, flying slice of ham? Why for PlayStation 5, though? Nothing about this game can't be handled by the PS4. There's a lot more in store. Let's start with an update on an eagerly awaited PlayStation VR game. There we go. This will be sweet. Look, guys. It's Luke Star Wars. He's the good Jedi. You must stop, Vida. Why you never mentioned that you had the force? Oh, dude, do you get to one-on-one -on -one Vader? Okay. All right, that's a good one. That's going to be fun. You think the PS4 is better than the PS5 for games? Well, PS5 doesn't really have a library yet, so by default, yeah. Dear members. Whatever you do, oh. stay in the light. Oh, the Lunar Lander. Wait, is this control? Oh, yeah. Expansion 2 Awe, available August 27th, okay.
Oh, it's it's literally auto chess? Oh. I thought it was like a version of auto chess. Man, PlayStation's being so weird. Oh, this is kind of like that one game. Um where you can move from sign to signs. Oh yeah, it is that game. Except you're playing a lady, so it's a different version of the game. There's, oh, oh, the pedestrian, that's what it's called. Looks like there's new levels and you get to play as a lady. Cool. This was a good game. This is for big brains only. Oh, that's cool. I like this game because you're in a big old environment. That's cool. So it's coming to PlayStation. Confirmed. The Pedestrian coming to PS4 in January. Okay. That's a good game. Now let's take a look at two new games headed to PS5. Now remember guys, these are only games that could run on the power of PlayStation 5, so let's see. Ghosts running silently between the straight, cold lines of a corrupt state. Quieting down, don't shed a tear. They count, ration, manipulate. All right, medieval times, I'm in. They've taken everything from those they claim to protect. Authority and steel will not stop us. Oh, nice. Some stealth game, maybe? We are race. Bypass defenses and strike at the heart. The ghost of the forest, the race. Seven oh seven, thanks for becoming a member. Welcome. We take back what was stolen. And the people call us heroes. Remember, PS4 not powerful enough to play this, apparently. To others, we are rivals. I don't get it. Unless it's 60 frames a second. Oh, it looked 30. We are all outlaws. Oh, I was gonna say, is this a Robin Hood game? Oh, that's cool. So like a four-player uh, infiltration game. Where you and like three friends have to like sneak into a base and steal all the money. Alright, that's cool. I was thinking it was like a Robin Hood game, but... Okay, PS5 only, guys. It's too too powerful. Temtem. Battle friends. Oh, is this? Oh, that's right. This is like that Pokemon game. I forgot about that. Pat lost his membership? Aw. That's alright, Patrick can become a member anytime. Anytime. Yeah, I forgot this is a... like a Pokemon game. But it's, you know, but it's not. But it's Pokemon. Only available on the PS5, guys. Only the PS5 is powerful enough to run that. We've got new PS5 gameplay for this melee-focused action epic launching this holiday. All right, this looks cool if this plays like Dark Souls. Hello. Hi. My name is Keith Lee. Hello, Keith. And I am the game director for Godfall. Great, welcome. On behalf of Counterplay Games, 
we are very excited to share gameplay with you today and to offer you a glimpse into Show the mystical me. world of God. Show world. me. Today, you'll be seeing extensive gameplay captured on a PlayStation 5 development kit. Please keep in mind that the game is still a work in progress and some things may change from the final product as we continue to learn and harness the power of Sony's next generation console. Do you guys feel Please like the final enjoy. product comes out like uh, six months after release is when so they actually have right a working game? Godfall is. Godfall is a looter slasher that features intense action, a slusher? satisfying moment to moment combat, and robust loot progression systems robust you can enjoy the game at your own pace playing alone or through online co-op with up to two additional teammates oh cool co-op game godfall is set in a brand new high fantasy universe filled with heroic knights arcane magic and forbidden realms the world is split up into the elemental realms of earth water air oh okay and fire oh that's cool Godfall is a complete package. All loot and gear in the game are acquired or unlocked through gameplay. There are no microtransactions. No waiting for content. I like how it's that's a feature now. It's like announcing that, hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna scam As you. As an adventure, you'll get to tear through enemies to challenge a mad god who awaits you at the top. You play a Valorian knight, a godlike warrior able to equip valor plates, legendary armor sets that transform you into an unstoppable master of melee combat. Cool. Throughout your journey, you'll find ancient valor plates lost in time, each with their own characteristics. I like the armors, that's history. that's cool. Now let's talk about gameplay. Yay. First, our team wanted to do something different. We wanted to combine action RPG loot progression with third-person melee combat to create what we think is a looter slasher. Looter slasher. Our game is therefore one part gear driven and one part player skill driven. In other words, not only do we want you to find exquisite weapons with powerful loot traits, but we also want you to have that feeling of accomplishment for mastering the wide set of combat mechanics available to you in Godfall. Good. From a combat philosophy perspective, the melee combat in Godfall is intended to be fluid, dynamic, and interactive, embracing offense over defense. More often than not, you'll be facing multiple enemies at the same time. As a result, you should always be moving and closing the gap on enemies. Also, you dominate the combat space, not the enemies, and the game rewards you for being aggressive. Okay. Now that you're familiar with the combat philosophy, let's dig into the weapons themselves. In Godfall, there are five weapon classes. The longsword. Dude. The dual blades. That lion helmet looks awesome. The polearm. That is so cool. The two-handed warhammer. Wow. And the two-handed greatsword. I want the warhammer, please. 40,000 of them, please. Each weapon class has their own unique movesets and play styles, ranging from fast combos to more strategic, deliberate play. As you defeat enemies in your adventures, you will acquire numerous weapons for each weapon category, each weapon with their own primary and secondary traits. At a later date, we will delve into the weapon classes and how to modify them in greater detail. For now, we'll go over the dual blades and the longsword weapon classes. The okay. dual blades are the fastest weapon class in Godfall. Cutting edge technology. Speed, fluidity and mobility. The dual blades are exceptional against soft unarmored targets or single targets. You can perform a combo by executing four consecutive mm, light attacks. Wendy's combo. The dual blades heavy attack is a spinning blade cyclone. The blade cyclone can also be used as a finisher at the end of your light attack combo. So what are the signature moves for the dual blades? As you build up charge, you can also activate inner focus, which is unique to the dual blades, which inflicts massive damage in a short period of time. Massive damage. There's also a mortal coil, where you can throw your blade into an damage. enemy, pulling the enemy towards you, like pulling a cable. Damage, damage, damage. damage. Now let's switch to the longsword weapon class. 
Longswords are balanced weapons, embodying crisp damage and simple damage. without needing a lot of elaborate combo setups. <laughs> Similar to dual blades, longswords have their own four hit light attack combo. Then there's the heavy attack finisher, which can be used at the end of your light attack combo. There are three signature moves for the longsword class. There's Spectral Flurry, which cannot be interrupted and deals high damage to multiple damage, nearby targets. Damage. Then there's Spiral Technique, which eviscerates all enemies in a straight fixed path. Notice there's a white flash after a longsword swing called a timing attack. If you press the shield button exactly at the same time, you'll perform a devastating shield uppercut with your longsword. The shield no, a is a damage. core part of Godfall. <laughs> It's available to you throughout the entire game. You can always block incoming attacks with your shield. If you press the shield button at the right time, you can also parry an attack. That's a lot you of damage! You can perform a light attack after damage. a last second damage. shield block to counterattack with a powerful shield strike. Wow, that's cool is though. Great not just for defense, but also offense. You can aim and throw your shield, which will hit multiple nearby targets. If you tap the shield button just as you catch your shield, you can perform a powerful wave attack. You can double tap the shield button to petrify enemies. And of course, you can perform an R3 ground finisher on Whoa, enemies. Whoa, an R3 ground finisher? That's crazy. Guys, R3 ground finisher, dude. Oh, this is me showing up at the Wendy's. You're out of nuggets, rock! <laughs> damage, 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 damage. 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 <laughs> this game seems pretty awesome. That was a lot of damage. We hope you enjoyed our first walkthrough video of Godfall running on the PlayStation 5. <laughs> We also want to thank all the fans for their endless support since our initial reveal back in December. I hope the game's not expensive. We have a few more surprises coming down the road, such as details on loot. Because that's going to be a lot of damage. We're eager to share more with you on our way to launch this holiday season. We hope that you will join our Godfall community on Twitter, Facebook, damage. and YouTube. Damage. Thank you. Damage. 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 That's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed this peek into the future of PlayStation. See you next time. Oof. There was really nothing in that at all, actually. I think I was excited for a few games, but for the most part, uh, that's a big Z, 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 Z. Yeah, that was a big sleeper. The only thing I was really interested in was the thing, I forgot the name of it, the, the girl who was a hunter, who, like, the game that's like, um, you know, like, it's like Shadow of the Colossus meets Zelda. Other than that, that's, that's, uh, what's, what's the PlayStation chat saying? Let's see. A lot of L? What does L mean? Oh, a lose? Oh. Not, not, instead of a win, it means it's a lose. I'm sorry. I'm a little older, so I need to learn what the kitties are into. Yeah, there wasn't really in, anything in that at all. Here, let me turn on the notifications, too, by the way, for you guys. Uh, your all your big O support. I mean... Let's watch through that again. All right, so... No, that's a lot of damage! Yeah, that was a lot of damage. Zach Pollard, not impressed. Hitman was the highlight. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, so Crash Bandicoot seems cool. 
I'm down for Crash Bandicoot, but you shouldn't need a PlayStation 5 to play Crash Bandicoot. Like, is that is that on PlayStation um, 4 or 5 or both? Like, this is a game that should be on both. All right, Crash Bandicoot, cool. I'm, I'm interested in Crash Bandicoot. Uh, Hitman VR, that seems like a lot of fun. That'll be cool to play that game in both VR and also in, uh, it'll be cool to play that game in both VR and also regular mode. Like, that'll be cool. Crash Bandicoot seems fun. New subscriber shout-out. We also can't wait to talk Like, Crash Bandicoot seems cool. Uh, the, uh, Hitman game seems cool. Maybe the one with the girl who's, like, a huntress. That seems sweet. Like, I'm, I'm alright with that one. That, that looked cool. Like, the whole shooting and sliding around and killing bosses, but... There's got to be a lot of different bosses, you know what I mean? Hitman will deliver motion sickness? Maybe. Well, I mean, it's not like Hitman moves really fast, right? Like, he's kind of just... Like, Hitman, for the most part, just kind of walks around and, like, goes slow and waits for, you know, his prey and stuff like that. Now, this looks cool. But... Is this, like, PS4 or PS5? Because I don't even know. Oh, this is PS4. Okay, that's totally fine. All right, Crash is in. Crash Bandicoot 4 seems good. And they started pretty solid with Hitman 3. And the fact that you can do VR is pretty cool, too. But, uh... Hmm. Oh, the Robin Hood game. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, uh, the Hood one looks cool. It's like Assassin's Creed, except, like... Well, actually, I'd say that's more Assassin's Creed than the new Assassin's Creed game is. Because you and four friends get to, like, sneak into a base, and you can, you can like, beat the crap out of people with a giant hammer, but for the most part, it's probably good to sneak into the base as much as you can, take out their defenses, wipe everyone out, and then get all the gold. Kind of like uh, Payday or something, which seems cool. But we're looking for this dude. Yeah, I don't know how this is gonna play out in VR. The shooting might be a, a little, uh, a little rough. I don't know how that's gonna work. Did this guy not hear another dude come into the bathroom? It's like a private bathroom. This um, the Hitman Three, I'm gonna have to see in VR in order to know whether or not it's gonna be good. Like, I'm gonna need to see some actual gameplay. That's January, so, but I, I I'd give it a shot. But I think I'd just be interested in playing an actual VR game. Okay, this was a remake of Braid or a remaster Braid. This seemed cool. They spent a lot of time on this game. Like this was a cool. Uh, this was like a really cool PlayStation game. But I, I really hope there's other enemies. If it, if, if that cursed spirit is the only one in the game and you have to fight like five of those of the same thing, that seems like uh, oof. That's gonna be a big oof. All right, let's go back to that uh, hood game. Oh, actually, uh, Vader Immortals seem pretty cool, too. You actually get to play around with a lightsaber. That's kind of cool. You must stop, Vader. I don't understand why you never mentioned that you had the... Auto chess with a bit, was a big ZZZ. New subscriber now let's shout take out. a look at two new games headed to PS5. Ninja Hate Campers. Thanks for seven, dude. Forest shadows. Oh, here we go. This is that hood game again. Let's watch this one one more time. Silently between the straight, cold lines of a corrupt state. Quieting down, don't shed a tear. They count, ration, manipulate. This is cool so long as it doesn't have like magic or anything. Like, if this is actually kind of realistic, this will be cool. Authority and steel will not stop us. We aren't an invading army. We are wraiths. We bypass defenses and strike at the heart. Yeah. I think it has magic with the bow. Oh yeah. Or maybe it's just like an explosive arrow that we take back what was stolen. And the people call us heroes. 
Because I don't see anybody with a staff like doing any conjuring, but. To others, we are rivals. Yeah, that could be a little magic. This kind of feels like a, a Call of Duty Warzone or something. Like first you gotta get in and defeat the guards, but then you're fighting everyone else for the money. But again, I don't know about that PS5, dude. Like. I'm going to get a PS5 just so I can cover all the new games, but none of these new games feel like they're going to require a new system. Like, the PS5 just kind of feels like a like a PS4 upgrade. Like, they can't really... I guess I understand why they're making a new console, because, like, it's it, it would be hard to sell everybody, like, a $100 upgrade kit or something like that. You may as well just make a new system. But for as cool as the PS5 looks, and for how powerful they say the Xbox is going to be, nothing really seems so crazy it's it's almost like it's like saying oh hey in order to play this new minecraft skin you're gonna need a whole new computer and it's like really really though i don't know about that i don't know about that all right well that's gonna be it for this live stream of the uh, playstation state of play uh i was hoping to see more but they'll probably have another event just for the ps5 so thanks everybody for smashing that like button we already got up to the two hundo in likes, so thank you very much for liking the stream as always. Welcome to all the new members today too. A few of you guys who've been longtime supporters like Dustin and uh, also 707 becoming members too. So thanks guys. I'm going to hop out of here. I might stream later today. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, as always, just make sure you click or tap the notification bell and change it to all in order to know. That's why we stick to PC. Yeah, I mean, not often do you have to upgrade on PC. When you do, it's super expensive, but a PC is like an investment in time. A console is just kind of like it feels like temporary. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Have a good afternoon, good evening, good night. And I hopefully will see you a little bit later for more. See you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.